It's the Newport This Week video podcast series. I'm Bill Bartholomew. Today, we welcome Counselor Dave Carlin. Good morning, and thanks for the time, Counselor. Good morning, Bill. Just Dave. Always have been, always will be. <laughs> like that. Appreciate, I like that. Appreciate the formality. The city sends me things and always emails Counselor Carlin. I say, now, wait a minute. I'm still Dave. So it's a pleasure to be with you. Appreciate I the invite. Absolutely. So a lot going on here, certainly, that we could get into. Let's start with this, the ongoing Rogers High School situation and project that is obviously fundamental, but at the same time, some cost overflow. Right now, let's talk about the electrical easement and the dirt pile related to Rogers High School. Your take on that situation. Sure. Let's uh, first start with a couple of pieces of, of information, uh, although I'm sure your audience is very familiar through Newport this week and other means uh, with the project, but I, I fully support the project. I voted for the project in 2020. The project is necessary. Uh, we do need a clean, a healthy, a safe school. Uh, and it's it's what the voters, the residents, the students, the teachers, the staff, and everybody demand. And I'm completely on board. Uh, originally, the project was to cost some $98 million. And uh, in fact, the city voters approved approximately $100 million uh, in a bond in 2000. So we were off to the races from there. Uh, it was going well for a while until, of course, we backed into or backed straight into COVID in 2000 and some other issues, which uh, obviously caused uh, delays, supply chain delays, uh, increases in pricing, some uh, problems getting folks to actually be able to do the work and of course inflation uh, to the degree of at some point 11 percent so the project uh, spiraled one would say a little bit out of control uh, in those following 18 months the city of Newport in a past council bill uh, in fact it was the council of 2000 uh, which ended in uh, November of 2022 or ended December of 2022. So it was the council elected in 2020, uh, which provided to the project uh, a bond premium or a bond rebate of approximately $14.7 million, which was to be added on to those uh, original or to that original bond approval and which would bring the total to around $115 million, which was at the time uh, supposed to cover all of what the voters and what the residents of the city of Newport were promised. That is to say, including a now uh, out of the project cosmetology program, auto body program, track and field, and also uh, central administration headquarters. Fast forward past that, more concerns regarding uh, funding, more concerns regarding out-of-control costs and other factors. At this point, it is around February or March of 2023, and I was appointed by the council to become a member of the Newport School Building Committee. That's when I really started finding out, Bill, uh, about, in my opinion, uh, how the project had been somewhat mismanaged from a cost perspective and from a let's just face it, common sense, what are we doing here perspective? What do we want done? What did we say we would get done? What are we able to get done? How much resource, how many resources, how much money and more do we have to get it done? And can we please get a uh, project guideline? Can we get a final estimate of what the cost will be and sign that contract so that we don't go over anymore? Uh, well, we hadn't done that uh, at the time and for months, after I began raising those issues, along with other uh, members of the building committee and other uh, elected officials throughout the city, I still didn't see what the project cost would be. So we have on our hand uh, a debacle to begin with, uh, which spiraled out of control cost-wise. And then, and then to your earlier question, uh, we have the issue of an approximately now 50,000 cubic yard of dirt, which was dumped on the project, the old track and field site, next to uh, 
dozens and dozens and dozens of my constituents who are very concerned in the third ward uh, abutting the Rogers area uh, or neighbors of the Rogers area about the toxins that are in that dirt and about the possibility uh, of waiting months, if not years, to get that dirt removed. And that became uh, a major concern for myself and, as I said, the neighbors and some other members uh, or some other elected officials in the city. Uh, fast forward once again, Bill, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, to get this review all out in uh, in a uh, you know 10 to 15 minute time spot here, but it's, it's actually traveled, as you know, the course of uh, nearly two years now. Uh, but to fast forward to where I asked my council colleagues uh, to support a resolution demanding that the Newport School Building Committee, the Newport School Department, if you will, remove the toxins, remove the dirt from the premises. And that led to uh, something of a battle between the Newport School Committee uh, and the City Council, whereby we were told that we, the City Council, the owners of the property, do not really control the property. Uh, that is to say that we don't control uh, what happens on the property so long as it is being used, it is being used as a school, uh, which came as something of a surprise to myself and some colleagues. So we're stuck again with that dirt pile uh, continuing uh, to bury toxins or to uh, pile on toxins and again, uh, cause great concern to the neighbors. So uh, that's where we stood as of several months ago. Fast forward yet again to about two months ago uh, when, despite the council having asked several times and despite the uh, city manager having asked and despite, frankly, uh, the proof that the neighbors and others have brought, uh, including an independent contractor whom the council hired, uh, despite all the proof that we brought to them that there are toxins in this dirt pile and you need to stop dumping, the school committee continued to dump on that pile uh, causing many neighbors, uh, frankly, to uh, uh, to become more than just upset. Uh, this has caused now uh, some uh, some anxiety, uh, some uh, a disruption of normal life, if you will, for for the neighbors. And it's my job as a city councilor to stick up for those folks uh, and to navigate government, if you will, nav navigate the bureaucracy for them and to help them with those with those concerns. So, uh, what the council ultimately did. Ironically, I voted against it. It was a six to one vote. But what the council ultimately did two months ago, Bill, uh, was they voted to hire an independent lawyer, another geological or eco or, if you will, uh, toxin specialist. And they voted to tell in direct words to the city council or to the school committee come up with a plan for getting rid of this dirt pile and don't dump again until you do so. Uh, well, the first two things we can handle, we will have a lawyer who will investigate uh, the contracts, uh, which I mentioned at the beginning of the podcast. We will have a lawyer who will, or we will have a uh, an eco-specialist who will uh, investigate what's in that dirt and the dangers to the community. But the third part we can't control telling them to come up with a plan or do not dump anymore. And as of uh, a week ago, Bill, I'm very sorry to report uh, that the school building committee continues to dump on that pile. Worst of all, and then I'll, I'll pause uh, and, and give it back to you. I apologize for dominating so far, but uh, the worst situation of all is that the school building committee through their contractors. Uh, they have several contractors working to bring the project to fruition. And they have told us, they've told the Newport City Council, they've told the neighbors, and they've told anybody who uh, can listen, the taxpayers who pay the bill, that is, that we're sorry, we can no longer use that dirt for the project, which they had claimed was the reason they were continuing to pile up the dirt. We will use that, they promised us. We will use the dirt because uh, we can cap other parts of the project and use it for intermediary or other reasons. And as I just said, they came back 
to us with the infuriating uh, discovery, I use that word loosely, that they cannot use the soil, uh, which uh, frankly did not sit well with any member of the city council or city council, certainly did not sit well with me uh, as the councilor for the area. And um, it further caused pain for my constituents surrounding that area. Uh, we are stuck now, Bill, uh, with a mound of dirt, 50,000 cubic yards or so, if not more, which cannot be used for its original intent and which will cost approximately, I'm told by the school building committee, $4 million to remove. And what is the school committee doing? They're saying to us, that's the city's problem, not our problem. I think you and others who are listening can probably tell by now why the neighbors are furious. And it's obviously, as you've just laid out, a battle of sorts between, you can call it a proxy war, you can call it a municipal divide, whatever it is, between the school board, school committee, and the city council. So last couple of minutes here, what's next? What sort of remediation would be available if it's $4 million that is going to be coming out of the coffers of taxpayers? Is that something that, in your mind, is is worth the ask to remove that dirt pile? Or is this something that's going to be litigated in an ongoing manner that may take, you know, years to resolve? Uh, thanks for the question, Bill. And I'll be brief, uh, or I'll try to be brief. I'm not known for brevity. <laughs> uh, two things. Uh, number one, this dirt pile will go away. I will work as hard as I can with every ounce of energy that I have to make sure that we don't litigate this for years, that we find a solution and that we get rid of it. We are no longer going to rely on the Newport School Committee, the Newport School Building Committee uh, and the Newport School Department uh, to get rid of that toxic dirt pile. We are going to do this ourselves. And it's unfortunate uh, that the Newport School Building Committee continues to say one thing and do another, including telling us what the status of the project is, not just the dirt pile, and what available money there is. They are always claiming to be uh, broke, always claiming that they don't have any more money left. But yet, originally, this dirt pile problem was going to be their problem. And they were claiming, we'll take care of it, we'll reuse the dirt, we don't need really uh, any money. So now, again, the city will have to take care of it with regard to money. Yes, it is absolutely necessary to get rid of this pile. It's full of toxins. I will not have this laying on the shoulders of hundreds of uh, next door, or hundreds, I should say, of constituents in the third ward and those who are next door to the project, which leads to the last thing I'd like to say. You asked at the beginning of the podcast, what's with the easement? What's with uh, what Rhode Island Energy is asking for on the project site? I said all of what I said earlier because I wanted the audience to understand uh, how, in my opinion, untrustworthy this process has been with regard to what the school building committee is telling us and how the neighbors simply do not believe anything or virtually nothing that the school building committee is telling them. So when Rhode Island Energy approaches us like they do uh, in hundreds, if not thousands of other occasions throughout the state, to ask for access to private property, in this case, the city's property at Rogers High School, in order to address an energy concern, to provide additional energy. Uh, frankly, it, it comes, that request comes from the school department on top of what the neighbors consider story after story after story. They no longer trust the school building committee, and I don't either. So with that, we asked Rhode Island Energy to come before the council and explain exactly what it is that they want to do because they have more credibility, in our opinion, than the school building committee. And they did that. They came to the council and explained that they need an easement, a property access uh, to Rogers High School site through the back end or the mid end of Harrison Avenue onto a site where they already have uh, a power supply and they are going to put up four telephone poles uh, on the Rogers property to provide new power or additional power that the school department believes that they need. They're taking down some evergreen trees, which is disappointing uh, to the neighbors because that blocks the dirt pile that we talked about. And there are several other components of the project which are concerning and disappointing to the neighbors, including 
the effects of the wetlands area surrounding uh, the project. But for the most part, Rhode Island Energy uh, was given the benefit of the doubt by the many, many, many constituents and neighbors who came to the last council meeting. We will get this done with regard to the dirt pile and we will get it done in a timely fashion. It's just a shame that it's had to come to this point, Bill. Newport Councilor Dave Carlin, a dirt pile, one center of controversy in town right now and a big one. Thanks so much for your time this morning. My pleasure, Bill. Thank you for having me.